Hello, I'm glad to present this video to you on industry analysis. I used to be an analyst years ago, working in the research house of a stockbroking firm. I was a sales side analyst, so this topic comes in handy to me. When I was an analyst, I covered the oil and gas, media, pharmaceutical and heavy industry in Malaysia. It was truly a good memory and experience to me. I still miss the fun of the job. However, I'm glad that I'm able to share the experience with you. Today, we are living in an informational age with the luxury of a lot of data and information readily available to analysts and investors. However, the principles of valuation remains. It is still a matter of how we make use of information to make the most appropriate investment decision. Industry analysis is a crucial skill in fundamental analysis. I hope you can master the skill. Let's learn together. The objective of this video is to describe industry analysis and how it is conducted. In addition, the phases of the industry life cycle and competitive forces are explained. It is hoped that at the end of this learning session, students will be able to identify trends in industries that make them good investments. Analyzing securities in terms of industry grouping is widely practiced by both individual and institutional investors. It is hoped that this knowledge can prepare students to an analyst career indirectly. Industry analysis is the second step in the top-down, three-step approach to fundamental stock analysis. Once the overall state of the economy is understood, industry analysis can begin. Industry analysis focuses on industry life cycle industry structure and competitiveness. From an investment perspective, the identification of good industries come from finding those sectors whose expected returns exceed their required returns. Individual investors can conduct industry analysis themselves. It can also be done with the help of published industry reports. Industry analysis is important. Why is that so? Industry analysis helps investors select profitable investment opportunities. Studies of industrial performance do show a wide dispersion in the risk of return among industries. This suggests industry analysis is important. Industry analysis yield an understanding of the nature and operating characteristic of an industry, which can then be used to form judgments about the growth prospect of an industry. Stock prices are influenced to one degree or another by industry conditions. Even in a strong economy and bull stock market, some sectors and industries struggle. Likewise, some sectors and industries do well during recessions and even in bear markets. Industry analysis helps predict which ones will do well in the future and which might underperform. Industry analysis, in effect, set the stage for a more thorough analysis of individual companies and securities. An analyst who analyzes an industry must have a good understanding about the industry. The following list of questions may be a good starting point to explore further. First, what is the nature of the industry? Is it monopolistic or are there many competitors? Do a few set the trend for the rest? And if so, who are those few? Second, which economic forces are especially important to the industry? For example, is demand of the industry's goods and services related to key economic variables? If so, what is the outlook for those variables? Third, how important are technological developments? Are there any new developments taking place? 
what impact are potential breakthroughs in technology likely to have? Fourth, what are the important financial and operating considerations? Is there an adequate supply of labor, material, and capital? What are the capital spending plans and needs of the industry? Fifth, what role does labor play in the industry? How important are labor unions? Are there good labor relations within the industry? And lastly, to what extent is the industry regulated? If so, how friendly are the regulatory bodies? If we have answers to all these aspects, then we can have a better forecast of the growth and profitability of the industry. I'm going to show you how industry analysis can be conducted via the Osiris database in the University of Reading Library. You can access the Osiris database from the A to Z listing of University Online Library. This is the home page of Osiris. As shown in the slide, there is a selection for industry. Click on the selection and you will see a box appears. You may select the Global Industry Classification Standard. Of course, you may also try out all other listed selections for your learning and exposure. There is no limit to trying and knowing more. After you have selected the Global Industry Classification Standard, you will come to this screen. There are 11 types of major classifications. They are energy, materials, industrials, consumer discretionary, consumer status, healthcare, financials, information technology, communication services, utilities, and real estate. If you click on the blue folder, more subcategories will appear. As an example, I will select the healthcare industry. To refine my search strategy, I focus on Malaysian stock market. I click location and select Malaysia. The results are shown in this slide. There are 3,810 listed healthcare companies worldwide and there are 22 listed companies in Malaysia. To find out about the name of this company, I click on the icon in orange color at the bottom right of the screen to view the list of results. Here is the list of companies. Do you see the add icon on the left of the screen? You can click on the add icon to select the financial data that you wish to be included. I have included the key financial information of the companies such as revenue, profit margin, return on equity, current ratio, and PE ratio. This allows me to have a quick comparison of the companies in the industry. Their nature of business may be slightly different. For example, Top Glove is a glove manufacturer. KBJ Healthcare runs private hospitals in Malaysia. Pharma Niaga is a manufacturer of medicine and the key supplier to government hospitals in Malaysia. This database is very useful for students and new investors who wish to start their industry analysis and acquire a basic understanding about the industry. You will know the overview of market share, profitability, and valuation of the companies. Of course, details understanding about how different is each company in the industry may still require a lot of hard work and experience. Bear in mind that the data of the companies are historical data. We still need to put in effort to analyze further and do forecasting. Nevertheless, this database is a good starting point for industry analysis. Do you notice that I have circled the export function in read? Well, take note that you can download the data into Excel spreadsheet. How to do it? Very simple. Just click on the export function. 
A starting point for industry analysis is determining where an industry current position is in its industry life cycle. Industry life cycle reflects the vitality of the industry over time. It is created because of growth and competition. Life cycle growth influences many variables considered in the valuation process. A five-stage life cycle would include stage one, pioneering development, stage two, rapid accelerating growth, stage three, mature growth, stage four, stabilization and market maturity, and finally, stage five, deceleration of growth and decline. An analysis of the industry financial data helps place an industry on the life cycle curve and in turn guides the analyst in investment analysis. The analyst can determine whether all companies in the industry are in the same stage of the life cycle and use the company differences as assumptions and input to company valuation. Industry life cycle can be used to forecast industry growth, duration of growth, market demand, revenue, profitability, potential rates of return, dividend, as well as capital expenditure. Normally, the profit margin typically peaks very early in the cycle and then levels off and declines as competition is attracted by the early success in the industry. Stage 1, Pioneering and Development is the startup stage of the industry. Firms in the industry are just beginning to identify their markets, getting started in business with a new idea, new product, new technology or production technique that makes them unique. For example, personal computers in the 1980s, cell phones in the 1990s and smartphones in the 2000s. During this startup stage, the market for the industry product or service is small. The industry experiences modest sales growth, very small or negative profits. The firm incur major or high development costs. At the initial development, the industry is new and untried, and the risks are very high. It is difficult to predict which firm will emerge as industry leaders. Some firms will turn out to be wildly successful and others will fail altogether. Predicting which firms or technologies will ultimately dominate the market is difficult. Stage 2, the rapid accelerating growth stage is the period when an industry or company has achieved a degree of market acceptance for its product. The market for the industry starts to develop. During this stage, a market for the product or service is developed and demand becomes substantial. Sales and earnings grow at an extremely rapid rate because the new product has not yet saturated its market. The profits can grow at over 100% a year because of the low earning base. Profit margin is high because the firms become more efficient. There are limited number of firms in the industry and little competition. The industry builds its production capacity in an attempt to meet excess demand and increasing sales. At this stage, earnings will be retained for reinvestment. The economic factors have little to do with the industry's overall performance. This is the stage where investors will be interested in investing almost regardless of the economic climate. Investors have substantial interest at this phase. Normally, a good deal of work is done by investors to find such opportunity. For example, the car industry in the 1950s, the computer industry in the 1970s, and the internet and biotech industry of the 1990s, as well as the recent boom in e-commerce. At the mature growth cycle, the product or service penetrates the marketplace and becomes more commonly used. When the market becomes established, industry leaders begin to emerge. The survivors from the startup stage are more stable and market share is easier to predict. 
The performance of the surviving firms will more closely track the performance of the overall industry. This is a stage in which sales continue to increase, but no longer at an accelerating rate. From a relative high sales base, sales growth tends to be above the growth rate of the economy, but below the rates experienced in the previous cycle. For example, if the economy were growing at 5%, the industry might be growing between 7% and 10% during this stage. At the mature growth cycle, competition in the industry causes an increase in supply and lower prices. As a result, the profit margins begin to decline to normal levels. The greater competition also may lead to increase in advertising expenditures and other costs related to product differentiation or constraining entry of new firms into the industry. The stabilization and market maturity stage is probably the longest phase in the industry life cycle. This is a stage where the industry reaches an equilibrium in which the number of firms in the industry is set, demand is stable, and production capacity is at a level to meet demand. At this point, the product has reached its full potential for use by consumers. The industry growth rate declines to the growth rate of the aggregate economy or its industry segment. During this stage, investors can estimate growth easily because sales correlate highly with economic series. Although sales growth is in line with the economy, profit growth varies by industry because the competitive structure varies by industry and varies by individual firms in the industry, as the ability to control costs differs among companies. Competition produces tight profit margins. The product has become far more standardized and producers are forced to compete to a greater extent on the basis of price. This leads to narrower profit margins and further pressure on profits. Firms in a mature industry have plant and equipment in place. Financing alternatives are available domestically and internationally and the cash flow from operation is usually enough to meet the growth requirements of the firm. Firms at this stage sometimes are characterized as cash count, having reasonable stable cash flow but offering little opportunity for profitable expansion. The cash flow is best milk from rather than reinvested in the company. Under these conditions, Dividends will usually range from 40% to 50% of earnings. The rates of return on capital, ROA and ROE, eventually become equal or slightly below the competitive level. At this stage, the industry sales growth may increase at a decreasing rate or even decline. In unfortunate cases, Industry suffer declines in sales if product innovation has not increased the product base over the years. At this stage, the industry might grow at less than the rate of the overall economy, or it might even shrink. This could be due to obsolescence of the product, competition from new low-cost suppliers, competition from new products, as well as switch in demand brought about by better substitutes. Profit margins continue to be squeezed, and some firms experience low profits or even losses. Firms that remain profitable may show very low rates of return on capital. Investors would think about alternative uses for the capital tied up in this industry cycle. Let's have a quick quiz to test your understanding. At which stage in the life cycle are investments in an industry most attractive? Obviously, everyone is looking for an industry in the early phases of stage two 
and hopes to avoid industry in stage 4 or stage 5. Conventional wisdom is that investors should seek firms in high growth industries. This recipe for success is, however, oversimplistic. If the security prices already reflect the livelihood for high growth, then it is too late to make money from that knowledge. Moreover, high growth and fat profits encourage competition from other producers. Therefore, investors have to be aware of the company's valuation too. Lynch introduces an industry classification system which has a very similar spirit at the life cycle approach. He classifies company into six groups. First, slow growers. Slow growers are large and aging companies that will grow only slightly faster than the broad economy. These firms have matured from their earlier fast growth phase. They actually have steady cash flow and pay a generous dividend, indicating that the firm is generating more cash than can be profitably reinvested in the firm. Second, Star Wars. Star Wars are large and well-known firms. They grow faster than the slow growers, but are not in the very rapid growth startup stage. They also tend to be in non-cyclical industries that are relatively unaffected by recession. Third, fast growers. Fast growers are small and aggressive new firms with high growth rates in the range of 20% to 25%. Company growth can be due to broad industry growth or innovation in a more mature industry. Fourth, cyclicals. These are firms with sales and profits that regularly expand and contract along with the business cycle. Examples are auto companies, steel companies, or the construction industry. Fifth, turnarounds. Turnarounds are firms that are in bankruptcy or soon might be. If they can recover from what might appear to be imminent disaster, they can offer tremendous investment returns. And finally, asset plays. Asset plays are firms that have valuable assets, not currently reflected in the stock price. For example, a company may own or be located on valuable real estate that is worth as much as or even more than the company's normal business enterprise. Sometimes, the hidden asset can be intangible. These assets may not immediately generate cash flow and may be more easily overlooked by other analysts attempting to value the firm. Industry analysis needs to include the examination of competitive forces. Michael Porter characterizes the competitive environment of an industry in terms of five driving forces. These five forces describe the competitive environment, indicate the magnitude of profit opportunities, and help to determine the extent to which such profit opportunities are sustainable in the long run. The five competitive forces are trade of entry, rivalry between existing competitors, pressure from substitute products, bargaining power of buyers, and bargaining power of suppliers. A firm's competitive environment is described by the market structure the firm faces. Understanding the intensity of the competition in an industry enables investors to assess the effect of the competition on long-run profit potential. Finally, we have come to the end of this topic. Before we end this session, let's have a quick quiz to summarize our learning. If the economy is going into a recession, which of the following industry may be good investment choices? Let's try.
The answer is medical services and education, as these sectors are basic necessities, non-cyclical and more defensive. I hope you have learned something from this video. See you and goodbye.